Someone tried to prevent you from seeing this practice exam, but YouTube fixed that. So now I'm able to show you how to print off sections of your worksheet and also how to add alt text to both your tables and your charts so that you could get a great score on your exam like this one. All right, so in this project, I've placed all of the skills that we're gonna do in column B here. So the first thing we're gonna do is work with our printing options. You're usually gonna get like a selection of the worksheet that we're gonna print off. You're not gonna print off the whole thing, just a certain part of it. So let's say the A1 to H21 I wanna print off. I'll put that range in the name box. So the first thing you could do is put that range in this name box. So A1, let's say it's A1, to H21. So if you're doing a range, uh, put a colon H21, press enter so that I select that range first. And you don't have to do this, but one of my preferred options when you have a question that's dealing with printing options is to go to page break preview just to see what's going on. You don't have to, um, but I like to see what's going on. So I'll click page break preview. And then from here, we can go to the page layout tab. And then from here, we want to click set print area. So now that we've got that area of our worksheet selected, we can go to print area, set the print area. And you can see that this um, is the only part of our worksheet that we're going to print off. You can even take this a step further and change this to just one page if you feel like it by dragging this off. But if your exam doesn't ask you to do that, don't bother with it. Just set that as the print area and then jump back into our normal view. Okay, now I'll click somewhere outside of that area to deselect it. And now we can move on to how we can filter out information. So what I wanna do is I wanna filter out anything in the product code here that doesn't start with FA. So I wanna single out the products that start with FA, and there's two ways to do that. You could click on the drop arrow here, and then unselect anything that starts with, so you could just anything that doesn't start with fa you could do that you could also do something else you could use like a text filter so whichever way is faster for you go for it it'll work either way so you could do a text filter and say text filter that begins with fa press ok and the same thing would happen so either way that works for you whichever way is faster do it but for the time being i'm just going to undo that last step just because i've got our questions here that i don't want to filter out but Anyways, that's how you would filter out values in your worksheet. Now we're gonna try the toughest function in our exam. And if you need more practice with the if function, I've got a whole video, I'll post the, I'll put a link in the description box below this video that's all about if functions. So I've got a whole video on that. So let's say I wanna determine what the best seller is based on some logical test. I wanna display the word, yes, it's a best seller in this column. If the value, now be careful with that one. So if you see the word if in the question on your exam, whatever comes after the if is your logical test. That's the first thing we need. So if the value of the product in the average column is greater than 10. Okay, so if the value in here is greater than 10, it's a bestseller. And then if it's not, we're going to display the word no. So there's two outcomes with the if function. It's either yes or no, uh, over budget, within budget, that kind of thing. So two outcomes based on a logical test. Again, this is a lot if you're learning if function for the first time, so I've got a whole video on that, but we'll try it in this example. So we want to type in equal if, open parentheses, and then we'll click on this value to start our logical test. And you can take this a step further. I like using this on an exam. If, just in case you make a mistake, it's so easy to make a mistake if you're typing out a formula. So the way to correct that would be click this FX button. And this dialog box will tell me if I'm on the right track. Okay, so if the logical test is in that cell that we just highlighted, is it greater than 10? Okay, so yes or no, it is or isn't. That one for us is true. And then the value if true is just yes. So we put, if it's a text outcome, we put quotations around it. And numbers you don't have to, but the false is no. So it's either yes or no. The quotation around other one, press OK. And then because this is a table, you'll notice on the exam, it can be a little bit jarring sometimes when this happens, but if you're dealing with a table, it'll automatically copy the formula down for you. So that might happen on your exam. Don't worry too much about it. It's just because that's what tables do. Formula works for us. So it copied down, everything worked. It just tells me quickly, yes or no, this is a bestseller. And that's how you do the if function. Now, we've, you could also have some kind of calculation where you're multiplying, dividing, adding, 
we're going to use addition in this one. So just kind of a simple calculation that you might have to perform on your exam. So let's say we have to calculate the selling price in cell E14. So we're going to calculate the selling price by E14. We're going to add, okay, add the unit price um, to the markup. So the selling price equals the unit price plus the markup. So and then copy the formula down. That It's pretty straightforward, but a lot of just kind of core exams in Excel have you do these basic calculations. So just the plus, the plus symbol, and then this, pretty straightforward. So anyways, if you're not familiar with some of the operations um, in Excel, just keep in mind, you might have one question on your exam where it just adds you, tells you to add, subtract, multiply, or divide uh, two cells just like this one. So pretty, simple calculations. All right, uh, now we're going to create a chart. We're going to create a cluster chart from the description or the products. So not the product code, the description here. And then based on how much each one was ordered from January, February, and March. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is highlight this range here, starting with description. And then I'll press control on my keyboard to highlight the rest of the values that we need in this chart. And then most of the time you just get the default clustered column charts. So we'll click insert, uh, go to recommended charts, and this might come up. Okay, the bar charts are selected. You might get the column chart pop up, but if you don't, you can go into all charts, column chart here. We'll do clustered column chart. And then most of the time you don't have to do too much with the chart other than just create it and then put it to the right of your data. And you might have to add a title, just type it in. This one wants us to just make sure that the description is used in the horizontal title access titles, and they are, which is great. So that's everything we need to do. You won't have to alter too many things about charts, but I've got further projects that'll go into more detail about you know chart options. But for now, we're going to add an alt description to this chart. So you could have to create a chart, add an alt description to it. So to do that, click on it. I'm going to view alt text. So if I right click on the chart, I'm going to view alt text. There's a few ways to get here. And you might have to add in from here an alt text description. So if someone had some kind of immersive reader or was visually challenged and couldn't see what was going on in the chart, this could allow them to read what was going on in the chart, which is a nice feature that deals with accessibility when it comes to Excel worksheets. So we can just type in or on your exam, it's nice because you can just copy and paste whatever it says into this box whatever you need to add to the description. So maybe we'll do units, units sold in order one, something like that. Whatever the chart was about, fill it out with as much description as you can in case someone was visually challenged and they might need some kind of immersive reader to read what was going on to them and then press uh, just exit. That's how you add an alt description to either a table or chart. And you might be asked to do that on your exam. Okay, the last question in this project, we're gonna add in kind of a mini table called a spark line. The only difficulty here is just be sure to select the right type of spark line. So in our trend column here, we're going to insert our first spark line based on the three values from January to March. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the insert tab, make sure you you're start off with the cell that you wanna just do this for the first cell and then we can copy this down. So here's the tricky part. Is it a line column or win loss? Just make sure you click on the right one. I know that seems easy, but you could click the wrong one and lose marks for that. You don't wanna do that. So we're gonna do a column spark line for this one. Okay, so the data range, that's the values that we're measuring, which are the values in January, February, and March. So again, we're just getting it for that first one. I just wanna see if it works and then press okay. And it did, you can see the higher values in the first two months and the lower value in the last month. And then I can just drag this down, grab the autofill handle and then release it. And then you can see kind of the trend and that's what spark lines are all about, showing you very quickly what the trend looks like. If you want to follow along and download these practice exam files that I use in my videos, I post them all to my Patreon page. If you click the link on your screen or the one in the description box below this video, it'll take you there. From there, you can download all of the practice resources that I upload weekly. So if you want those, you got to check them out on this link here. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.